Hey, this is H1, and we're about to be running it back with another episode talking about chess knowledge, chess wisdom, chess understanding. And today, we will be going over what is space, why is space important in chess, and how to use space to your advantage. These things are really important. And if you don't know how to utilize space in chess, then this is going to make your chess skills really better than what it used to be. And that's pretty much my job, is to make sure that you know everything practical about chess. So just sit back, relax, enjoy the information if you're in your car or taking a shower or doing dishes. Just make sure you're learning about this chess knowledge, chess wisdom, chess understanding. Okay? I'll see you in the next segment. Peace. Man, space. <laughs> what what is the thing with space? Why is it so important in chess? Well, in order for me to explain why space is so important, I'm going to have to give you a good example. So, just bear with me, okay? Do you have siblings? Or maybe you was the sibling, but when you're a teenager or just a kid, a preteen, whatever, when you started thinking things as important, your bedroom was your sanctuary was the most important thing in your life because that's the only space your parents gave you. That was yours. Yours. Nobody else. And maybe you was lucky enough to have that bedroom by yourself, right? That whole bedroom was yours. You wasn't sharing it with nobody. Or maybe you got that special privilege that you probably was sharing that bedroom with somebody. And then your parents is like, oh, snap, we got enough room to put you here now. And then you're like, yeah, I don't have to sleep with my baby brother or whatever. So you're just chilling in your nice bedroom, reading a magazine, probably a book. Probably playing a video game, doing something that you like to do alone. And then you have this little brother just knock on your door. Hey, what you doing? And you're like, I'm playing the game. Get out. What do you what do you mean get out? I wanna I wanna play with you, big nah, nah, nah. Hey. I I don't like just get out. I'm cool. I'm good. I'll play with you later. But for now, I need you to go. But I'm not even inside the bedroom. Bro, close the bedroom door. Please. Just close the door. I don't I don't want to deal with you right now. And then maybe they just run in the room, throw some stuff all over the place, and they just mess up your whole room. And it was clean too. It was clean. They threw covers everywhere. They dropped the candle that you had. Maybe they even dropped the soda pop. That one soda pop that you know shouldn't have been there. That was flat. But they just threw it on the carpet. And then they ran out and said Fortnite dance or whatever. Whatever little brothers do. Or little sisters. What do you feel after that? You feel probably at that age anger. You're upset. Maybe you feel violent. That that boy or girl, they just went inside my bedroom and violated everything that I own. This is it. This is my house. And you just destroyed everything. You infiltrated my bedroom for your amusement. And it's something that you thought you had control of, but you did it. Long example, I know, but let me get to the point. Space on the chessboard is the squares on the chessboard. So the space on the chessboard is the 64 squares. Now, how do you use it for your advantage? Well, 
the squares on the chessboard you can control and you can control the squares on the other side of the chessboard which is your opponent and one of the many good ways to evaluate a position is seeing how many squares are you controlling on the chessboard now the starter position of a chessboard starts with white controlling the first and second rank and black controlling the seventh and eighth rank and as you activate your pieces you control more squares of your opponent's side you might put the bishops on crucial diagonals to target your opponent's weak squares you might put that knight near the center to attack some of your opponent's weak squares you might put your rooks on the open files to control some of your opponent's weak squares your pawns yes your pawns might be more advanced than your opponent's pawns which gives you more space to attack your opponent weak squares now you might be thinking how is this important like why like why is this important what what am i supposed to do when i get these squares how does this information bring me closer to winning more games well you're gonna have to wait in the next segment This is the waiting room segment, Chess Jokes by H1. And the joke of today is, why shouldn't you eat a chess sandwich? It's stale, mate. (laughs) Thank you for listening. Hey, this is Chess Knowledge with H1, and the sponsor of today is Anchor. You know what? Have you ever wondered, man, I just want to talk and talk, and I want people to listen to me, and I don't even know where to start? Well, H1 would suggest Anchor. First of all, it's free. They have their own creation tools so that you can record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And now they have this like new feature where you can add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. And plus, one of my favorite features, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can hear yourself on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or many more stations. And then, plus, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum leader. What is it? What's the word? Listenership. Man, I almost messed that up. Okay. And then it makes everything simple for you since everything is in one place. So this is the thing. If you want to start your podcast right now, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get it started. Anchor.fm to get started. Thank you for listening, guys. H1 out. Hey, H1 is here. H1 is present to tell you why space is important. And if it wasn't important, then I wouldn't be going over an episode talking about how important space is. So, why is space a thing? Why is it important? Well, as you use activity to overwhelm your opponent, whoever has more space usually has more options. And I can tell you from personal experience, having more options is a huge advantage. For example, I remember when I was a broke young child and I wanted McDonald's. And my mama was like, do you have some McDonald's money? In that moment, then I realized, (laughs) I realized money brings you more options. And at that time, I can say I did not have McDonald's money. So I couldn't decide where I wanted to eat. Not saying that my mama's cooking wasn't good. Just saying that McDonald's kind of is McDonald's holds a special place in every little kid's heart. And 
I knew it was bad for me. I just wanted it. Second example, a car gives you more options too. It gives you options to commute to work, hang out with friends, or do whatever you want. Go over, go wherever you want. You know what I mean? A car gives you more options. It, it has a good comparison to space. And then thirdly, for all my people that's in high school and need a, a, a good example in high school that incorporates the chess, a 4.0 GPA gives you more options to which college you want to go to. So if you want to go to Yale or Harvard, you need a good GPA. So space is as important as those examples that I just gave you. Because in chess, usually whoever has more space has a bigger probability of winning that game. Now, there is a big difference between a spacious position and a cramped one. So the spacious position, um, that's the player that has more space. Now, whoever has a spacious position has a lot more flexibility and options. Whoever has the cramped position has less mobility, less options, and pretty much no ideas. And when you have no ideas, then it's really hard to play the best move when you don't have a clear plan and when your opponent is putting the pressure on you relentlessly. And I always talk about overwhelming your opponent on this podcast. If you look at all of my episodes, you probably hear me talking about overwhelming the opponent pretty pretty regularly. And taking options away from your opponent by gaining more space is a good strategy. And that puts you in a good position to capitalize on any of your opponent's really dumb ideas that come about. Because usually dumb ideas come about when your opponent have no clear ideas in mind. Now, space is a key way on how to be aggressive in chess. And this is probably good for my attacking people. But when you have space, you have more attacking advantage. Now, some enemies are afraid of massive pressure. And for some people, and this, these are your opponents, it's hard to find the best move for the position. And that's what you have to look after. That's what you have to look for. It's really important to look for that fear in your opponent. And you can see it based on their moves. Are they doing something really vital? Are they even stopping my plan? And once you feel that aroma, the sweat from your opponent's eyebrow, then that's when you look for a finishing blow, a sacrifice, something that disrupts your opponent, something that gives you that winning position. That's what you should be looking for. Now, in the next segment, I will be going over how to use space to your advantage. Now, we're going to be talking about how to use space to your advantage. And before we talk about that, we have to talk about the word prophylaxis in chess. Because prophylaxis in chess has its own definition than it not being chess. Yeah, yeah, I said that right. And it can be really important, especially when you don't have a plan or an idea of what to do for your next few moves. So you use some prophylaxis and you're like, oh snap, I, now I got this and now I know how to do that. And now I know what your plan is. So let's talk about it. The Wikipedia definition of prophylaxis in chess is a move that stops the opponent from taking action in a certain area for fear of some type of rep repraisal. Prophylactic moves are aimed at not just improving one position, but preventing the opponent from improving their own. So, that's why the first thing you should be thinking about in your thought process is your opponent's 
plan. And since space is a temporary advantage in chess, you have to watch out for your opponent's best counters. You have to be relentless in chess, basically showing no mercy until you get that checkmate. And once you get that checkmate, then you all good. Then you all breezy. Then you can do whatever you want. You can be balling like you don't have a budget. <laughs> and this is the thing. When you're on the attack, think about it as fighting a wounded animal. Now, a wounded animal is more alert when it's injured. So, you're doing yourself a favor when you deliver the final blow precisely. You have to finish the job, finish the mission, and once you accomplish the mission, then you can celebrate a little bit. But you cannot celebrate when the animal is still alive and wounded at the same time because they're just looking for their way out to get a draw or maybe catch you slipping and get that win. So remember, and I told you this before, the worst thing than just losing a chess game is losing a chess game you were supposed to win because it just makes you feel worse about yourself like you really suck and yeah you don't want to feel like that now let's go over some more things about taking advantage of your space now the second thing i want to talk about because the first thing we talked about was prophylaxis now the second thing we're going to talk about is um pretty much having the opportunity to decide where you want to attack your opponent. So space gives you more flexibility, and flexibility is key, especially when you're trying to overwhelm your opponent, when you can decide if you want to attack the queen side or the king side. That is really powerful, and I will keep that in mind. There's been some games that I remember delaying cast lane in closed positions just to keep my options open. And this tricks the opponent into like, oh snap, should I castle since I don't know where my opponent is castling? Or I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the best choice is, so I'm just going to do this stupid move. And that's pretty much what happens to my opponent. And I'm like, okay, well, let's take advantage of that. <laughs> Next thing, the space advantage puts pressure on your opponent, which I talked about pretty clearly. Not most, most players don't know how to handle cramped positions, so they blunder. And when they blunder, then you capitalize on it. Now, good players, players that have more experience, knows how to handle cramped positions by doing certain things that we're going to talk about. The last thing for taking advantage of your space is Zugzwang. Do you not know what Zugzwang is? Let me explain it. It's a weird word. It is Z-U-G-Z. W A N G. I almost said J, but I had to say G. <laughs> but Zugzwang is when any possible move will worsen their position. So when you take space from your opponent, you usually get them closer to putting themselves into Zugzwang. So remember, the goal before checkmate is to get a winning position. And getting a winning position, you take more space. And if they're in Zugzwang, which is that any possible move of theirs will worsen their position, then you pretty much got your goal. And you're one step closer to getting that checkmate. So the next segment, our last segment, we're going to talk about how to get out of a space disadvantage. This is the waiting room segment. Chess quotes by H1. And the quote of today is... It is my style to take my opponent and myself onto unknown grounds. A game of chess is not an examination of knowledge. It is a battle of nerves. David Bronstein Thank you for listening. How 
how to get out of a space disadvantage. And you probably thought that I was going to talk about this, but H1 always talks about both sides, okay? I wouldn't leave nothing out because this is just as important as everything else I have talked about. And space is a temporary advantage. Remember that. So if your opponent don't do the right thing or the right set of moves, then you're back in the game, baby. You're back, baby. So usually in a cramped position, there are key principles to keep in mind. Now, number one, trade off as many pieces as possible. The more pieces you trade, the easier the position gets, okay? Unless you're like, you don't want to trade off pieces and then they have a tactic where they're up ahead of material or some crap like that. You want to trade off pieces meticulously. Did I say that right? Meticulously? I don't know. You want to trade it off precisely where the position is still equal. You didn't have to sacrifice anything, but you got to trade some pieces off to make make your life a whole lot easier. So that's one of the main plans in a cramp position. Secondly, you have to look for activity. And it might be like you're in a cave and you see no sunlight, right? It might feel like that. And it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling sitting at a chessboard, feeling squeezed to death for hours. So it's really important to look for your pawn breaks, open lines, or even sacrifices in worst case scenarios. Because for me personally, I would rather take a losing position with active pieces than an equal position with no activity. With modern chess nowadays, you will see grandmasters sacrifice pieces and cramped positions for more activity in a clear plan, okay? So remember, look for those things, activity, because you don't want to be cramped, especially in modern chess today. You don't want to be cramped. You should be willing to sacrifice some pieces for a clear plan, and that's what we should be all striving for especially nowadays. Remember, you're facing a human, so they don't know that they're winning, but all they know is that you sacrificed a piece for more act active pieces, and they don't have the right set of moves afterwards. Now, if they do, if your opponent does the right set of moves afterwards, then you're screwed, but you're pretty much screwed with the cramped position. So, hey, you get to pick and choose pretty much how you want to lose. Okay, if you can't do the first two tips, then hold on for dear life, okay? Defend like your life depends on it. And I mean, maybe there's going to have to be some moves that you repeat back and forth. But if you're defending for dear life, then you should be fine. But I don't like doing that for us. H1, I don't feel like that is real chess, but... Sometimes you just have to hunker down and do your best. Keep the fort. Keep the shield. You know the fort, like, when you was a kid, you took all the cushions off the couch and you made a fort. And then your big brother kind of, like, ruins that by tearing it up. Even though you worked so hard and in your little mind, you think that you worked so hard for it that you needed that, but you really didn't. Yeah, that's the fort that you have to... Hold on for dear life, okay? And pretty much that's it for taking um, taking care of a space disadvantage, okay? Hey, you made it! And this might have been a hard concept to learn, but you made it here and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you dearly. H1 is proud of every single one of you that made it this far because I have a secret to tell you. H1 Chess is still sponsoring these episodes and guess what? If you're trying to get better at chess, the discount has went up to 30% off the first month. So if you're trying to get better at chess and trying to get personal personalized lessons, 
just for you for the weaknesses that um can make you get better at chess with the months to come then aim chess is for you go to the website the app use promo code h1 chess 30 get 30 percent off your first month i would do that i'm already signed on there and i it, it's pretty convenient when you are rusty so that's why i use it nowadays and i i, I love using it it's, it's pretty dope but anyway thank you for being here thank you for listening and like always if you want more information go to chess knowledge with h1 on youtube go to chess knowledge with h1 on facebook you get to join the facebook group with the with the whole clan and go to h1 chess on instagram or twitter i'm on all those platforms so just follow anyone and you'll get more information on who i am what i think about just more stuff my family i don't know i don't know i'm just not all about chess okay i'm a human being that's an instructor but anyway thank you for being here and peace